Welcome, everyone, to the Centurion Leadership Battalion Show with Justin Bizarro. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B-I-Z-Z-A-R-R-O. You can find me on Instagram at Justin Bizarro. You can find the show on Instagram at Centurion.Battalion as we start to rebuild our Instagram. Since we lost our Centurion Leadership Battalion uh, Instagram, we are now just Centurion.Battalion. Also, you can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. And you can also find my three other shows on Spotify, The Justin Ryan Bizarro Show, Justin the Food Entrepreneurs, which is the most popular one, and The Night Dasher with Justin Bizarro. Again, that's K-N-I-G-H-T-D-A-S-H-O-R. Okay, and I'm rebuilding that as well as we record this. So it's actually been about... 20 days since I've recorded an episode for Centurion Leadership Battalion. As we've relaunched the other episodes, as we've had some issues with one of the podcasts and things we've had to deal with legally, there I've been distracted. I've also been recording four or five episodes a day here and there to prepare for some time off in May, where I'm going out to California for Foodtopia, also for the CrossFit Games Regionals, for uh, Zoe Warren and John Wood. Um, two children are now adults that are very important in my life. Um, I would call them stepchildren, but I'm very careful to do that now. And so one of the things that I want to talk about today is what are panic attacks. And this is part of the series, which we'll call the Identity Crisis series that started uh, a few months ago. We've recorded a bunch of episodes, but what is an identity crisis, which will be the next episode, our final episode? It may be broken into two parts. We'll see what happens. But those will be the la- that will be the last episode of this series, and then we'll sp- switch into Pillars of Leadership series, um, and then go around leadership more on those pillars and the questions around those. So I'm going to try to stay more focused with this show, just try to do seasonality, because we go through seasons in our life. So we're going to try to do seasons, or for lack of a better term, semesters, with the show and with the episodes where they clump together and they have one message or one large message. And in this case, this has to do with identity crisis. One, because I've been through one recently. Uh, Between the first time we did the podcast through uh, basically August of 2022 to now, um, in between there, I went through an identity crisis. I also went through one of the largest panic attacks that I've ever had in my life. And it actually lasted days. And one of the things I'm going to state first and why I say it lasted days, because someone will be like, how is that possible? You just need to ground yourself. Well, I'm going to explain how it happens, why it happens, what causes them, why all of a sudden over the last 10 days, I no longer have anything to do with them and probably will not have them anymore in my life if I use the tools that I've been recently given. So, and I will give them to you, the audience as well. So first off, before I get into the history, let's just look at what is an identity crisis. I mean, what is a panic attack? I'm sorry, wrong topic. So usually panic attacks, the symptoms are shaking, feeling disoriented, nausea, rapid, irregular heartbeats, dry mouth, breathlessness, sweating, dizziness. Okay, that's what they say here. And I've experienced all those. Also needing to go to the bathroom is one of them. Uh, Immediately, um, thoughts of not wanting to live or wanting to die. Those are also part of panic attacks. There's... um, You know, chills I've heard. There's numbness or tingling sensations, particularly in the hands and feet. And there's a feeling of unreality or detachment. Um, I also got chest pains. I also had headaches. I also had abdominal cramping for anyone who's out there. And I also weirdly would get like hot flashes every once in a while when they would happen. And so interestingly, I've had anxiety probably my entire life. And if anyone goes back to episode 12, of the Centurion Leadership Italian show. You can go back into my family history. You can go back into something that happened bad to me as a kid. And you can see from that that life becomes difficult. And so I'm going to start to anchor what for me causes panic attacks or the anxiety that I've lived by for almost my entire life. There's been 
seasons of not having it. When I was with Deborah for a majority of the time, there was no panic. There was no anxiety. There wasn't a lot of anxiety and panic from 2010 in my life to 2021. Okay, I, I'd learned to deal with it. I'd cope with it differently. I had good relationships. Um, one of them, of course, was with my past, who we all know was, she was the co-host of the Junction and the Food Entrepreneurs. And those relationships helped ground me, okay, where I couldn't ground myself. And that's not saying they were the right thing to do, uh, to have someone else ground you, but I got a lot of love and a lot of kindness and a lot of worthiness from those relationships. And what I could have done better, um, we'll talk about, but mainly it is that I set too many expectations around those individuals and didn't allow it to just be. And I knew better. I know that expectations lead to resentments and hurt relationships, but In a lot of cases, because I didn't know how to deal with the panic attacks and the anxiety myself directly, and I had always been in relationships when I went to deal with it, the relationships became part of the dealing with it, okay? And in 2019 through 2020, it's probably the best I've ever dealt with the panic or the anxiety, okay? And maybe even 2015, uh, part of it anyway. But really, 2019 to 2020... Uh, It wasn't until 2021, 2022, where the panic attacks would come back in such force that I would almost be debilitated on a daily basis. I was getting them daily at a point where I couldn't get out of, I would go to the bathroom in the morning. They would happen first thing in the morning. The minute I woke up in the morning, I try to ground myself with 75 hard. I try to do all the things and next thing you know, I'm in a panic attack that lasts sometimes an hour even with calming myself down, even with doing all the steps I read about, which is, you know, come back to reality. But one of the major things and symptoms that goes on in um, panic attacks or panic attack disorder is the flight or fight. Like if you're panicking, you're going to fight or flight, meaning I'm going to run or I'm going to fight. And when you no longer want to fight anymore, if you've been having them and you've been doing a lot of fighting over the panic disorders or trying to fight for your businesses or fight for your life or fight for your relationships, then eventually you are going to flight. Okay? So, again, back to episode 12. If you guys want to go back and learn in my family history, you'll start to pave between the lines. But one of the things that happened to me as an individual that groomed me in a way to... um believe that I was unworthy, that no one would love me as much as they did, and that no one would ever believe me. Okay, so that led to exaggeration because, you know, who would believe you if something's bad happened to you and that person doesn't want you to tell anyone, they are trying to discredit you, trying to make you believe that no one will believe you. And then when people actually don't believe you for some reason, um, or, you know, it's not everyone, but some people do, you start to believe that what that person is telling you is true. And there's panic around this, okay? There's panic around, okay, this person grew me, no one's going to love me as much as they do, okay? Therefore, I need to be told I love you by the people around me on a regular basis if I'm not in check with getting the love of myself forefront, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. The other part is the believability Um, the minimizing and the exaggeration, you know, minimizing the bad stuff that happens to you or exaggerating it because you need to be believed. It both exist. Okay. In, in this arena. And when it comes to panic attacks, I will tell you from my standpoint, there's a few things that incur them because of this would happen to me as good. One is, um, combined with my parents aren't overly affectionate towards us. They love us. They, 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 say I love you or they did growing up here and there not very often um and then there's a whole other family trauma around some of that stuff and and in that but um that I won't get into and you start to trying to prove yourself all the time and you start setting expectations for yourself and you start having expectations of those around you that they will believe you no matter what or if they love you like you love them, 
then it's unconditional. And the minute, you know, for me, the minute I felt I was being used, the minute my reality wasn't matching what I felt was, or my reality wasn't matching what people were telling me I should be seeing or I should be doing or I'm not seeing it properly, or financial stress for some reason, because again, as a kid, what happened to me, there was like financial involvement in it. Uh, weirdly and you know some abuse there Um, so what do I talk about panic attacks well they can you can get rid of them for years and I and I for the most part I did and for the most part the anxiety it was hard and you know there's shocks to the nervous systems and relationships and wanting them to build but it wasn't there it literally exited me for a long time, but not, again, because of my own doing. I was working on myself. I was, you know, in group meetings and therapy sessions and had a therapist, and they helped me deal with all of it, but I didn't actually use the tools for myself. I still got myself into the places that I could still get others to give me that fulfillment because I wasn't able to love myself holistically uh, until the last 10 days. And it's the craziest thing because now that I do, and this is not a selfish thing, this is not an ego thing, it's just loving me for who I am and accepting me for the mistakes that I've made. And that the things that happened to me in my past that aren't my fault, the abuse, the negativity, the verbal abuse, the assault, the stalking that happened later in my life, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. But I, you, I'm one of those who take blame for everything because that's the way I was conditioned. You know, not only by what happened to me as a kid, but by my parents also. The first thing they always wanted me to do is take ownership of my part to an extreme. And I get it because I need to grow, but it also leaves me as always the one who's taking full blame for everything. Which I get it. We have to play our parts. We, we are to blame in every situation. There, we have a part. But I think that it's hard because often as kids, when everything's blamed on us, which often then becomes, okay, if I'm accepting the blame and I grow up and, okay, I need to accept my blame all the time, you start getting blamed for things that you didn't do. Interestingly, the kid or the child who who's able to receive it, who's able to take the blame, who's able to own it, will often start receiving way more than is their portion or what they end up doing. They'll start getting blamed for things that they didn't do. Why? Because they admit it. They're able to deal with it honestly. And because of that, it's a lot easier for those parents to talk to that child. So that just starts surmounting, right? They don't have a fear of dealing with it. Okay, and that can happen in our relationships too. If you have someone who's very open-minded, who's able to listen all the time, but and you have someone who's not, sometimes that open-mindedness and that ability to listen can eventually become so overwhelming the person that's being that's doing all the listening or dealing with all the stress or dealing with the situation can become overwhelmed and have a panic attack i mean in here it says in the things that i've read um the nih the mayo clinic the research that i've done it's about grounding yourself in reality okay but when you lose things or you start having things taken away from you or your relationships start falling apart or the people you think they are aren't who they say they are or your your relationships become blame oriented uh for me name calling is a trigger uh causes panic i don't like it and um those type of things i don't like fighting in general uh it gives me panic i don't like why do we need to fight about things why does there why does it need to be an argument and, you know, I've caused those two. I've been the arguer. I've been the person, the aggressor. I've been the fighter, as I said, because of these panic, panic attack disorders. But interestingly, uh, recently, I really blew up my life. I panicked that I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I panicked over a family history that suddenly came to the forefront from an individual I ran into in the middle of Nashville. I lost my mind and this panic attack literally cost me everything okay it lasted for days before I came out of it and 
weirdly, when you're in a panic attack, you lose track of time, you lose track of your conversations, and in some cases, I would call it delusional or hallucinant, although I haven't never experienced that until this episode. But right around Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving holiday mounting, I go on a trip to Nashville, run into someone from my past, something from my family history comes up that I sort of had, like, you know, but you don't know, but now you have the confirmation. And my world shattered, and I didn't have any fight left in me. I was trying to hold it all together. I was door dashing like crazy. I was trying to find jobs after FSP and try to keep a roof over our head and take care of Deborah and our dogs and everything. And all of a sudden, all of that pressure came to head with this feeling of unworthiness, of being unlovable, that no one would ever love me if they knew this about me. Um, And, you know, we can go back to episode 12 and talk about that because that's the feeling that exists. Um, And now all of a sudden, maybe that dude's right. No one will ever love me as much as that person does. Like that, that, that conditioning that went in as a child and you're in a relationship and maybe this person doesn't love you as much as they say they do. You know, and maybe that's not true, but you don't know the difference because you're not, you're in a full panic attack and things are just spiraling out of control. And it's interesting to me because I think that if you haven't gone through one, okay, you're a great person, you just didn't, but you're not living your life, you're not going to your past, you're not turning over things properly, you're not dealing with the things that cause you fear, okay? Because my fears just happen to be nothing other than being unlovable, other than feeling not worthy. And this constant need to prove myself in both of those things. It's why I work so hard. It's why all of a sudden I have this weird sense of not having any anxiety in my life ever. And I mean the least ever. I mean even when I'm talking about I had the least ever and I had relationships and they helped with and that went away for a long time. It's nothing like when I've given it to myself over the last 10 days. Okay. It helped from a friend. It's helped from Deborah. Um, reaching out to me and talking to me here and there. Um, And it helps that I face the reality of that I had panic attacks. And in the middle of a panic attack, like I talked about, I also had an identity crisis that came to the forefront. So I compounded my issues. I had this long panic attack on top of this whole identity crisis, which probably triggered it in the first place. Because all of a sudden, you don't think you are who you are, or you don't know who you are. You don't know whether to believe the people around you who are telling you, or to believe what you think you are, or who's inside of you. You don't know where to go for help. And you fly. You f- you flee. And it's the worst thing you could possibly do. And like I said, I don't remember a lot of it. It was like this weird thing, like delusional thing. I don't even know how to describe it. Like I remember... S- the the trigger I remember the feeling of wanting to die and jump off a bridge um, and almost doing it in Nashville and um, I don't remember like really a lot of details uh, in between uh, for a week but I do know that by the time I came out of the panic attack my life was completely different and I was alone and I had fled everything that mattered to me and uh, you know we talk about mental health and mental issues and leadership I'd taken on so much I'd been a leader for so long I'd put so much pressure on myself to succeed and take care of everyone uh, that when all that fell apart and I wasn't that protector that leader that entrepreneur anymore coupled with this negativity that suddenly came to the forefront as okay well if I'm not those things or God doesn't want me to be those things because he's taken away what am I you know and it caused a panic attack like I've never seen before um and since then I've had about six or seven panic attacks one of them two of them really bad 
Um, it's where my reality, where I thought someone was something who they were, or I believed them when they said they were who they are. I used their words and I weighed their words. But when their words no longer matched their actions, it was causing me this panic. Like when I was a kid, like, okay, I hear you, but this, what's going on here, this abuse isn't matching what you're saying. You love me more than anyone, yet I know something's wrong here. Okay. Um, and when you know someone has loved you more than anyone else and they're in your life, yet you have this echo in your head of someone saying it, you get this weird thing going on. And in a panic, you don't know what's up or down. Like all of a sudden your brain floods. I don't even know how to describe it. Like you're in such a panic, you will do anything to get it to stop. And for some reason you blow up your life in anything that's slightly stressful. And then you have to rebuild your fucking life with what's left. Because how do I know? I'm fucking doing it. I'm doing it with these podcasts. I'm doing it when I relaunched Justin the Food Entrepreneurs. That was after this crisis. I didn't know what the fuck to do. I ended up in Nashville. I ended up trying to deal with these issues and find out more about this family pattern only to have the person completely fucking disappear on me. That gave me the information that caused the panic attack in the first place. Poof, gone. Not on social media, not anywhere. It's a random coincidence, which there are no coincidences, but something that I needed to hear. I just wish I would have been in a better state and not going through an identity crisis at that time that would cause the panic attack and cause the identity crisis to get even larger, which would cause me to flight. It was the wrong thing. It was cowardly it wasn't courageous and it wasn't good and it's no one's fault and I don't know if anyone's getting anything out of this but if you set too many expectations for your relationships you will have panic every time those expectations aren't met if you expect them to be loving you more than you love yourself so you can survive that is an expectation that leads to resentment and whether you realize you're doing it or not, when you need that love or you want that love so bad because you are so, what I would call, un insecure and you're feeling of unlovable because this, this past keeps coming to the forefront. And then when it really comes to the forefront, um, the people that you think love you the most or have loved you the most are actually the ones who have hurt you. You don't know what to do and you throw away everything in your life for some reason. We throw away everything in our lives. I did it. I've seen it. I know other people do it. I've been in group therapies. Been in therapy. I hear it. So, you know, I'm sorry for anyone I've ever hurt in a panic attack. I'm sorry for the people I've hurt recently. I've been extremely humbled recently, um, particularly over the last few months. I've learned to love myself more than anyone will ever love me. Uh, I've learned to accept myself more than anyone will ever love me. Maybe God loves me more. But I've learned to accept me for me. And I've learned that the relationships that are around me are have to be the ones that I want. Not all, It doesn't have to be a need. Yes, do I need someone to be in a marriage and the to grow old with and not want to be alone i get there's a need there yes and human contact and social beings yes and in you know being a couple that's what i want more than anything but do i need it to survive no do i want it yes do i need it to fulfill my destiny or my you know my so-called destiny of wanting to be married and grow old with someone and not be alone yeah of course but it's not a need, and even though I say the word, I need it. Because I do. In order for that to happen, i got to find someone. I have to have someone to grow old with. But I want it more than I need it. And I need, and the need has gone away. Now I want to be with the person I want to be with. Or the human. Now I want to be in those relationships. I want those friendships. They're not out of you know, coincidence, or they're not just out of convenience. And they're not just out of because someone gives me attention or builds me up 
so I feel good about myself because before I needed it I don't need it anymore and it's just sad because I feel like I've spent 136 episodes on this show and we've never discussed this and we've never had the vulnerability to discuss this so with that being said you know I think that if you are having panic attacks or anxiety the best thing you can do is learn to love yourself spend time with yourself read books by yourself go to a movie by yourself and I know that's hard when you're in relationships but you need to find you okay or you're going to lose your relationships how do I know I've done it I'm the culprit I'm the person who did it I'm the person who fucked things up okay I let my world cause me to panic and I let my mind with this simple fact of all I had to do was love myself and learn that that's enough and then be humbled by the world around me and see that life happens for us truly and while I've always known that I didn't allow that into my life the last two years from 2021 to now and it's a weird feeling now that it's all gone I can't believe I've wasted my life worrying about such nonsense and not being more present which really matters to me you know how do you also get yourself out of panic attacks be present make everything of every moment build loving memories don't attach yourself to the outcomes do the right thing because it's the right thing love the people around you not expecting anything in return because what will always end up happening is you're going to always work at it and someone's always going to get more from your perspective than you did they're going to get more credit on social media you know i've had two stepdaughters when the the significant other of their father gets more attention on social media than I did, it hurt. It was hard for me. Because I felt that we had done a lot, Deborah and I, and we had gone on trips and we had done all this stuff, yet we never had those things. But I was comparing myself, which led to suffering. I wasn't good enough with just saying... I did the right thing. What does it matter? The reward? It doesn't matter. What does the outcome matter? It never mattered what mattered. Now I know it 100% and I knew it then, but I would lose track of it. Is that it mattered that I got to spend time with him? That I got to build the memories that hold me up right now? That I got to build memories that I'll carry for the rest of my life? Positive, loving, happy, great memories for the people around me. That's how we do it. And maybe most people get it or don't have this issue or whatever. I'm just not one of them. I was an entrepreneur. I ran a very successful business for many, many years with partners. Not on my own. Nothing's ever on your own. It's always a team if you want to be successful. And, um, you know, the other thing is, is I wasn't giving enough credit to those around me. I wasn't giving enough credit to Deborah. I wasn't giving enough credit to my kids my stepkids or whatever you want to call them Deborah's kids since I don't want to confuse the stepkid thing because I you know that would assume that I'm still a parental figure in their life which maybe I am maybe I'm not I don't think they like being called stepchildren they are my children for lack of a better term but I can't say that either So you can see why you start to tumble into panics. I'm just showing you a little bit of what goes on in my head. I go round and round and round and round until it's panic. Until it becomes so much bigger than my reality. Which is, it doesn't matter. I do it because I love them. It doesn't matter what the title is. It doesn't matter what happens on social media. It doesn't matter how many times they spend with someone else over us. And these, this is true examples all the way around. Okay? And lastly, if someone is stalking or harassing you or doing whatever, it's up to you to keep fighting it. And I did a really great job of it until I couldn't. 
where I had too much surmounting on me and it became part of the panic. In a series of a very short period of time, I had a lot of shit happen within a three-week period. Deborah was gone in California for two of the three weeks. I was traveling back and forth from Nashville twice to figure out what the fuck was going on and trying to find a job and a career. Uh, And on the second one is where I ran into the individual that my mind broke. I don't know how to describe it. I had identity crisis and I had a panic attack that literally lasted days through Thanksgiving, through the holiday, through like a week long period, probably a little more than a week. And when I came out of it and I tried to fix it, there was no fixing it. The fence wasn't able to be mended at that time. Why? Because I didn't know what I've known over the last 10 days where even though you want to be loved by the other person, that person will will not, does not want to be needed by you. They don't want their love to be needed. They want it to be wanted. They want you to love yourself enough where their love is complimentary. Where it builds us up. Where I'm always good. My glass is always full. My bucket is always full. Because I love myself. So if you want to get rid of it, and you know, we'll talk about that identity crisis and some steps there too. But all of it has to do with loving ourselves for who we are and accepting us for who we are. So thank you everyone for listening in. Love yourself, really. Truly love yourself for your flaws. Say I love you every day to yourself, multiple times a day. I love you, Justin. I love you, Justin. It matters. I also say the serenity prayer at a freaking nauseum. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So... Live by those standards. Thank you, everyone. You can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. You can find me on Instagram at Justin Bizarro. I hope this episode was okay. Sorry for getting a little upset there. I'm very emotional about all this. It's still raw for me. I miss my family. I miss my life. I miss the things that I had. Okay. And there's one other thing I will note for everyone. If you are getting bullied and you are being abused and you have old people as an entrepreneur or a leader who were once under your leadership or once under your guidance that are harassing you, it will cause panic. And if you don't have enough love for yourself to deal with that and you start letting in other people like I did the last two years, voices be louder than yours in your own head and them identify you more than you identify yourself and they tell you who you are versus... You are who you are, okay? And I'm not saying that the thing between my ears is the best place to be in my own brain. I think outside feedback is key, but from the right people, the people that want to see you grow, not the people that want to see you fail. I'm out. 